Welcome to our motorhome road trip to South Wales. Welcome to our motorhome road trip to Mid Wales. With Caffillian locked down less than 24 hours before we were due to travel there and the rest of South Wales looking like it would go the same way, we decided to head to Monmouthshire to check out Black Mountain Cycle Centre not far from Papagabeni. With our plans changed we needed to find a place to stay so we called a few campsites in the area, most of which were either full or closed, but ended up at Penydry Farm and managed to book in for a couple of nights. With Sean booked into the Black Mountain Cycle Centre the following day, we headed out for a hike to check out the local area. Hike, what better way than to finish off at the pub? The Skirid Inn is actually the oldest inn in Wales at over 900 years old. Legend has it that the inn was used as a court of law where capital punishment was imposed for certain offences such as sheep stealing. The inn is also reported to be haunted. The next day, Sean headed off for his day at the Black Mountain Cycle Centre. I headed off from the campsite and the ride up to the centre took about 10 minutes. We checked out the car park the day before when we had a walk up there. It looked a bit sketchy for the motorhome, uh, that's why I decided to ride from the campsite. Uh, there were a few sprinter type vans in there and access for uh, that type of van was absolutely fine. I decided to buy an e-mountain bike ticket which was definitely the best decision. Uh, when I had a chat with the guy in the office that gave me the tickets, he said that the e-mountain bikes beat the uplift trailer and I found that I would definitely get more runs on an e-mountain bike than using the uplift and also you get to stay two hours after the uplift's finished so you get to go between four and six just for the e-mountain bikes. My plan was just to do the blue runs because I was feeling a bit tired and a bit rough with the cold so I started off with the blue trail called the rabbit run. I was really impressed with the trails, they are well maintained and have all the features you would expect on a bike park blue. They have great flow with sweeping berms, tabletops, jumps and a few drop offs. All the features are rollable or avoidable for the less experienced rider. These trails are full on, the more you put in the more you get out and after just a few runs I was really building my confidence. I would definitely say they are Bike Park Blues, just like Bike Park Wales or Antestinyog. To get the most out of these trails you really need to be confident of riding bike parks or be confident on the reds and blacks of trail centres like Swinley, Landegler or Coed Brennan. 
The trails aren't as long as Bike Park Wales, but with an e-bike, the ride up to the top is about 10 minutes, so you can get so many more laps in. And being able to stay until 6 p.m. means that with an extra battery, you can literally ride until you drop. After a couple of runs, I was really starting to build my confidence and speed when So Sean, what have you done to your leg? Um, went to Black Mountain Cycle Centre this morning. Didn't really feel very well this morning. I had a bit of a cold and what have you, but went up, thought I'd give it a go. Getting better as I did three runs. Yeah, really enjoyed it. Getting better as I was going on. And then going down to where the uplift road crosses the trails, slammed my brakes on, slipped off my pedal, a massive hole in my leg. So that cut my uh, session short. So I came back and then basically Emma had been doing everything in the van, cleaning and everything. She just finished everything, taking the dogs out, sat down to have a lunch. And literally I rock up with my leg hanging off. So all systems go as usual. And we cleaned it, we cleaned it all up, and we cleaned it up, put sterry strips on it, you know, we did all of our first aid stuff. So, and then Emma, the star she is, went into Abergavenny and went and got a load more supplies. So, um, sterry strips and pads and gauze and bandages and stuff. So, yeah, so that's it. I'm out of action probably for the next couple of days. Uh, we'll have another look at it on Monday. Maybe I can get out on the bike then, but um, yeah, that's how my day went today. Oh, it's leaking a bit. It is leaking a bit. Maybe we should have taken you to hospital. Maybe. Oh dear. Is oh, that well. stitch coming off? I'm not sure. A bit. Yeah, it's starting to... Uh... It's because you keep moving. Yeah, well, it'll be all right. Mm. Oh well, we'll just have to chop it off. Yeah. Cool. So, with Sean's leg hanging off, no campsite booked, and it being a Saturday night, we turned to the park for night app and found out that it was possible to stay overnight in the main town car park in Brecon for one night. When we arrived, there were a couple of other vans already parked in the car park, so we decided to check out Brecon Town on foot visiting Brecon Cathedral and the grounds. Taking a riverside walk along the promenade. And then heading back to the van for a chippy tea. The next day we decided to drive all the way to Aberystwyth to pick up supplies, have a wander around the town, we're heading to a stopover near Vulch Nanti Ariane Forest Park. We found this perfect little stop on the Park for Night app, which is a camping and caravan club certified site called Ten Fourth Fuck. Nestled halfway between the Forest Park and the famous Devil Bridge in the heart of the Cambrian Mountains. This small and friendly site was just the tonic after a stressful couple of days. So we set up camp, opened a beer and chilled out with an incredible view. We were treated to a beautiful sunset and then an awesome dark sky full of stars to end the day.
We woke up to a fabulous day weather-wise, so we headed to the Bolsh Nanti Ariane Forest Park for a hike along the Ridgetop Trail. The Ridgetop Trail is a mixture of fantastic views towards the sea one way and over the mountains the other. The path is well kept and suitable for most, however, some sections of the hike are steep but short lived, so there's always a view to take in while you get your breath back. The trail drops down into a beautiful pine forest, with lush green moss covering the forest floor with a couple of small waterfalls. Apart from great hiking trails and mountain biking trails, the other main reason we chose to come to this particular forest park was that they have a kite feeding station. With over 150 kites visiting daily, it was a spectacle we didn't want to miss out on. happening today Sean? Uh, going on the blues here at the can't pronounce trail centre that I can't pronounce. <laughs> we'll put it up they, on the screen. <laughs> where they where they do the red kite feeding. Um, <laughs> so yeah so we'll see uh, see how I get on with that with my whole of your leg. Yeah we don't want to see any more holes no. of any other part so of I've your body. I've got all my today. pads and I'm going to put where my uh, shin guards when I go downhill so Moral of the story? Always wear your shoe pads. So we're at the top of the blue, just on the climb. Uh, so now we're going to head down the Melder. Have I got that right? Uh, no, you didn't. It's Melinda. And here we go. This is where the trails start. So they split off here. So you go left for the blue. And the roller coaster begins. Whoa. These are really nice to pump over, keep your speed going. For the full Melinda Trail video, check out the MTB playlist on our channel. A 
of air time through there. Oh. What's this, Sean? This is round two. So I'm going to do the blue again. Uh, but I know what I'm doing this time, so I won't be going as quite as quick. Because it's... Uh, <laughs> It's fast. It is fast. If you want it to be, you can, yeah, you can uh, get some air time. But yeah, it's all good. Cool. I'll see you in a bit. Enjoy. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Cheers. This is just great fun. <laughs> that a second time round. Here we go. What an amazing trail. Thoroughly recommend that. Great fun. After spending a lovely few days in the same camp spot, enjoying the weather, the wildlife, and making new friends, it was time to move on. We found another campsite we can't pronounce on Google Maps and checked in for a few nights. This campsite was perfectly located for the famous Mac Loop, a low-level training area for jet aircraft. Hello. Yes. This beast. <laughs> Here he comes. Hello, donkey. Hello, donkey. Hello. 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 <laughs> Hello. I haven't got any food for you because we're not allowed to feed you. I'm sure you've probably got plenty, haven't you? Yeah, you've probably got plenty. There you go. Hello. You're going to make me jump when you eat Yes. <laughs> the following day we woke up to wall to wall sunshine again so we decided to hike from the campsite up to the Macloop lookout point. Hiking through the campsite owner's land alongside the road for about three kilometres. Once we made it up to the main car park, we followed the steep trail up to the top of the Cad West Hill. Rising 300 feet up from the main car park, it is an amazing viewing location. There is no official timetable for when low flying aircraft may pass through the valley, so you have to be prepared to wait for a few hours on the side of the hill to be within a chance of seeing the jets come through. It's an aircraft lovers and photographers haven and well worth taking up photography kit if you have it. Unfortunately, we didn't see any aircraft come through on the day we went up, but we took in the incredible views, had some lunch at the top and had a beautiful walk up and back. So it was certainly not a waste of time.
It is currently, what's the time now? Is it about 4.30? Yeah, 4.30am, we've had no sleep because of these noisy bastards with their music all night long. So we're up making a cup of tea. After literally no sleep, we decided not to risk another sleepless night and moved on from the campsite early. We headed further north to a pub stop just north of Coe de Brennan. The Bryn Arms offers free stopovers in their car park in exchange for purchasing food and drink. So we headed for the pub garden, enjoyed a couple of beers and some cheesy chips. With the pub lockdown curfew in this area being 10pm, we got a fabulous, uninterrupted, lovely night's sleep. The following day we headed out for a walk to Trawsfinith Lake, which has an interesting history including information about the decommissioned nuclear power station on its banks. After our walk, we checked into the caravan and motorhome campsite close by and after setting up, we chilled out for the rest of the day. What are we doing today then, Sean? Going to Coe de Brennan today, going uh, mountain biking again. How far is that away from our campsite? 10 miles. Not too bad, is it? One road? Yeah, 20 minutes, 20 minutes, easy, straight in. It's Monday, so the car park should be relatively quiet. Where do we normally park in our big uh, vehicle? In the overflow car park at the top. It's the top end car park, isn't yeah. it? So there's as soon as long... you go in, you take the first left and then go up there. And there's lots of parking there for bigger vehicles. So it's no problem. Mm. Hi, we're at Coe de Brennan today and we're going to do the Cufflin Cock, which is a fast red. Right, so I think this is greater a red trail, so Let's see how, uh, how difficult it is. So with it being Wales, it's bound to be rocky. I think this has gone onto the same climb as the Temptoir, which I remember when I did that, it was quite technical and it looks like <laughs> Just the same, but I'm on the e-bike this time, so it is going over these sections much easier than before. I remember I really struggled to the day before, but the Vitus just went straight through. For the full Fast Red Trail video, check out the MTV playlist on our channel. Really let the brakes go now and just pump up and down these sections to uh, keep my momentum. It's 
this joins in with the Minotaur trail now. And after a lovely two weeks, it was time to pack up and go home. After a tricky start to our trip with new lockdown restrictions and a lot of campsites either full or closed, we ended up using a variety of stopovers, including a car park, a pub stop, a small CL site, some larger campsites, and ended up joining the Caravan and Motorhome Club just so we could ensure a safe and secure night's sleep. The weather was fantastic for the whole trip and apart from one noisy night and a leg injury, we managed to have an awesome trip. Join us next time on our next motorhome road trip adventure. And if you haven't already, give us a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos coming soon. Take care, stay safe and remember, don't take life for granted.